Hello and welcome to this very special broadcast that we're bringing to you on Chat GPT-4. OpenAI has released GPT-4, the latest version of its hugely popular artificial intelligence chatbot Chat GPT. The new model can respond to images and process up to 25,000 words. That's about eight times as many as Chat GPT. Here's a complete lowdown what this new chat bot is like and how exactly it is different from its predecessor. Chat GPT, Open AI, AI chat bot. These are a few words that have been buzzing constantly over the past three months after Elon Musk founded AI research body Open AI, launched ChatGPT and took the world by a storm. And while we are still understanding ChatGPT, the internet is once again in awe of Open AI with the launch of GPT-4. For the uninitiated, GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer, a language model that uses deep learning to produce human-like texts. Now, ChatGPT was initially described as GPT 3.5 model and we all saw what it could do. But now with GPT 4, it only gets better. ChatGPT was restricted to text, but now one can even use images to ask Chatbot. It also comes with a sharper memory. A trait that made ChatGPT stand out against other AI assistants like Alexa or Siri was its ability to retain the context of the conversation and with GPT-4 this memory gets better. GPT-4 is also multilingual and is hard to trick when it comes to AI bots. Many users trick bots into questions and hypothetical situations but OpenAI has claimed that GPT-4 has the ability to maintain rationale and not get tricked easily. What makes it even more interesting is that GPT-4 can assume personalities and talk to you in a way you want it to. So if you want the bot to talk to you like your American friend who is an army officer, it will assume that character and talk in that lingo. Unlike ChatGPT, GPT-4 is behind a paywall. In order to use it, a user has to simply log in to the OpenAI website and upgrade to the Plus model. It currently costs about $20 a month. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman took to Twitter to explain that the model is still flawed and limited but will certainly grow on you. Bureau Report, India Today. Okay, joining us this morning, uh, Ayush Ailabadi, who is my colleague. He is technology editor and presenter. Also, Kanishk Gaur, founder and CEO, India Future Foundation. He's also the former director of cyber and digital transformation, EY. Good morning to both of you. Ayush, I'll come across to you first. First of all, how is GPT-4 different from its predecessor? Well, GPT-4 is different in a number of ways, but largely when we talk about it, it is much faster. In simple words, it can deal with many more nuanced instructions than the previous generations. And more importantly, it can now also, eventually at least, uh, keep images as input. So that's going to be a game changer, but that's not gone live yet. For chat GPT plus users, we already have GPT-4. But just to give you a little bit of insight, a few weeks ago on Tech Today, we had access to Bing, which was powered by GPT-4 a previous generation, an early, early version of it. But we got quite an interesting, well, hypothesis with, with ChatGPT and Bing Power ChatGPT because the, the potential is endless when you're talking about what this can actually do, right? It l largely relies on a multimodal model. Now, what does that mean? It can take text inputs of more than 25,000 words. You could earlier just do 3,000 words. It'll also have an updated data set because earlier on, Chat GPT, I think, had a data set till September 21. So a lot of the responses you're getting were dated. Now, the good thing is, uh, like the previous package was saying, that even, even Sam Altman of uh, OpenAI has largely accepted that this is a model which is going to get better with time. The, the entire team at OpenAI and AI experts do largely agree that AI will get better with more of us using it as well. And I expect GPT-4 to be much smarter. I'm very excited about the image search input feature as well, because they've already had some experiences over the past couple of months with 
with influencers and journalists using Bing, the new Bing, which would take on Google. I think this is fascinating. Just to give you a little bit of quick perspective, if you think of the hype around it, right? There's this crazy stat going around where the number of days it takes to get to a million users. Spotify, which is a really popular service, took 150 days. Instagram took half that amount, 75 days. And it's taking chat GPT, well, a much lesser time to get to that. In nearly a week, they have gotten to that, fi that figure. So you can just think about how exponentially it's growing in the world of AI. And I think GPT-4 is going to be no stranger to that phenomenon. Okay, so uh, is what kind of a sign is that that's going to be something that uh, we should be analyzing as well? Kanish, if I come across to you, what does this mean for the future of uh, AI as well? Also, for jobs, uh, should we be worried? Will chat GPT, GPT-4 replace uh, humans? Uh, thanks. Uh, I don't think so. Chat GPT will replace humans. There is always a need for upscaling and working with AI. However, there could be certain types of jobs which might get redundant, which could be content writing, right? A lot of people hire content writers. Now, if you've got ChatGPT, which can produce content in a fantastic way, then those jobs might be redundant very soon. Uh, we would also require people who can use ChatGPT with some of the other functionalities uh, and be used for creating content, narrative, could be used for data analyzing. So if you look at Morgan Stanley started using ChatGPT4, for analyzing data. So we would see that analysts who are working on technology or using data science uh, would start using uh, chat GPT-4 for doing analysis. Uh, however, there are still limitations in terms of biases which chat GPT-4 might bring in. And this was an issue with the earlier uh, GPT version as well. So the feeding which goes into GPT-4 is going to be very, very important. So for example, if I put in a lot of fake news uh, about somebody uh, on the internet, there is a strong possibility that chat GPT-4 will pick that news and create an image or a narrative which be, may be biased or misleading. So this is some, one of the key risks which you will see. So ethics uh, will be a big concern here. The other concern is going to be how do you tackle fake news and misinformation which could be picked up through the internet and could be misleading for platforms like chat GPT. Uh, the other concern is going to be how does uh, some of the other businesses which so far use Bing uh, adapt, right? So how do you use AI uh, to enable greater marketing, uh, sales, uh, where everybody is relying on data? So how do you uh, supplement using AI? It's gonna be a key question here. So we will see that a lot of companies so far have not been using chat GPT for business. So chat GPT for business is going to be a key component apart from personal use. So I see a heavy application of chat GPT when it comes to business. Tanish, stay on with us and Ayush as well. Now, the chat GPT-4 chatter. Let's take you through some of the advantages and disadvantages. This is what we, of course, are gauging from our understanding of what we're picking up from the internet itself. So, some of the advantages, quick response time, that's one of the advantages. Also, a disadvantage, limited knowledge of recent events. So, not much is known about uh, after 2021 is what we know from chat GPT-4. So that is one advantage, good understanding of ethics and morality. Disadvantage can generate incorrect information. Again, I misrepresent something on the internet. That's what GPT-4 picks up. That's going to be problematic. So these are some of the advantages and disadvantages. Uh, also, advantage, less experience. Expensive, of course, uh, this is all available on the internet. You pay a premium, you can now access GPT-4. Disadvantage, misunderstands the task. So that is something which is very critical uh, as far as, uh, you know, when you, of course, take recourse uh, to a chatbot in terms of seeking its help, it could misunderstand tasks. It could provide you with incorrect information as well. Ayusha is still with us. Ayush, again, we just took our viewers through some of the advantages and some of the disadvantages. Very intriguing for me to see that it has a good sense of morality and ethics. And then, of course, disadvantages also, that it could misunderstand tasks, that it could possibly pick up misinformation, as Kanish was also saying, from the internet in order to, of course, then pass it on. Absolutely. You know, that's a huge concern when you're talking about the data sets that it is using. But obviously, this is all yet in, in initial days. These are teething issues. Things will get better. Just to give you some perspective on, on the jobs debate uh, that, that you guys were talking about earlier, overall, the impact 
of AI on jobs will depend on many factors, including the type of the job, the level of auto automation that's possible, and the rate of adoption of AI technologies by different industries. But it's also likely that new job opportunities will arise as, as a result of the increased use of AI. Now, that was not me saying that. That was actually me asking ChatGPT4 exactly what will AI do? Will AI take away jobs? I'm just giving you an example of how even AI, you know, ChatGPT has its own view on it. But largely to answer that debate, look, will it, will it take away jobs? I really think genuinely it will augment a lot of existing jobs, ones that are repetitive and redundant, yes. But largely we're talking about schools, we're talking about uh, large organizations, we're talking about coders, because this GPT-4 version is already being used by coders and top companies to integrate into their existing workflows. Yeah, I was with a leading cloud service provider as well. Even they are already talking about how you can use GPT-4 with AI and ML models. If you don't pick it up early on, it might be something that could essentially hamper your growth. So all of us should get onto it and try figuring out what it's going to be like, because honestly, it's going to change the user experience with search as well. In terms of some of the concerns, look, GPT-4 does use uh, the internet and trolls through all, the, all these uh, data sets and gives you these answers. You're relying on a more accurate model and all the marketing spiel from OpenAI. But often on Tech Today, we have spoken to experts who have essentially revealed to us that if you were to plant that misinformation and it was to pick that up, and if the checks and balances weren't in place, it could be a concern. Also in the past, Google had to shut down, um, you know, some of its early efforts in AI because there were calls and, and, and remarks that it was becoming sentient, the AI. Now that is a concern as well, right? Where does the ethics come in? Where does the privacy and security concerns come in? These are genuine questions we need to ask, but take everything with a pinch of salt. It's great marketing by OpenAI, which is also supported by Microsoft. But for now, let's learn what this AI is all about and give it genuine feedback because it's only going to get better if we are responsible with the use of AI like GPT-4. Okay. Uh, Kanish, would you like to come in over there? Would you agree with Ayush when we, of course, uh, told our viewers, gave them a sense of the advantages and the disadvantages? Uh, how do you think which one outweighs the other? So, obviously, there's a great advantage with Char GPT-4 because it's going to help people enhance uh, their work it's going to help people in businesses but uh, there is also a couple of aspects which i use highlighted around security privacy mm -hmm. uh, on biases so some of these things have to be taken into consideration for example you know india is contemplating a data protection bill but if there is so much of information available about me on the internet how do i safeguard my privacy from platforms like chat gpt uh, is going to be a key concern and you know uh, ethics of ai we have spoken about it there could be aspects, for example, if there are coders who are using ChatGPT to write code or pick up code, they might pick up a code using AI, which could be vulnerable code. So for example, a coder might go to GitHub and pick up a code from somewhere else automatically, and it might have security weaknesses. It might expose the entire platform of that company to major security threats and vulnerabilities. So that could be one of the key concerns, right? Too much dependence on AI without taking security by design or trust by design or privacy by design are going to be some of the key concerns. But we have seen that Microsoft, uh, OpenAI, they build on some of these aspects as we move forward. A lot of times initially when products are built, they are built to scale to generate more users to start using it. And eventually we see security privacy concerns being aligned. But today the world is also getting more data localized. We have seen data localization regulations coming. We are seeing in data protection regulations come in. And these are very different in every part of the globe. So California data protection bill is going to be different. GDPR in U is different, right? And when India comes out, so how does a platform like ChatGPT adapt to some of these regulations is going to be a key concern. So regulatory concerns are going to be very, very important for ChatGPT. However, there is strong potential to create new jobs where people would require ChatGPT to use, uh, you know, as part of their daily lives. So you will see large number of job descriptions coming out where there will be a pre-requirement that people should understand and learn how to use chat GPT. So uh, I see, you know, banking sector using it, chat GPT in a big way, e-commerce sector using chat GPT in a big way, even healthcare sector, right? So that's, that's going to be a big, big uh, win for chat GPT. So striving that perfect balance between creating new jobs and also looking at security, privacy uh, and trust is going to be a key concern here. 
Okay, okay. Important points that are being raised by both uh, you, Kanishk, and Ayush. Please stay on with us. GPT-4, in fact, the underlying technology of Chat GPT Plus or Chat GPT-4 is here and it is promised to be better and more sophisticated than its predecessor. Let's take a look at its underlying concerns, though. OpenAI's chat GPT has taken the world by storm, raising concerns on whether artificial intelligence may be on track to replace humans. But while the chatbot has shown it can hold a conversation, answer questions or examinations and even write coherent code, chat GPT has also been plagued with concerns. The biggest fear pertains to education. Relying too heavily on the tool could lead to a lack of critical thinking skills or pave way for plagiarism and cheating. OpenAI has admitted the chatbot has limited knowledge of world events after 2021 and might file replies with incorrect data. The chatbot could also be used to generate malicious code, which means hackers could create malware, potentially leading to many more attacks and breaches. Artificial intelligence content can sound extremely confident and authoritative and yet be completely wrong, a term scientists label as hallucination. It could also help governments, companies and other organizations spread misinformation and distribute propaganda much more efficiently. There are no doubts that artificial intelligence tools can revolutionize technology as we know it but there is also no denying that there is a dark side. Bureau Report, India Today. Right, Kanishk, I'll come back across to you. You know, just to keep things, things a little light, viewers want to understand what does the future look like. When we look at chat GPT, we're looking at GPT-4, what does the future look like? Like some people even want to know, are anchors like me going to be replaced in discussions like this and chat GPT-4 will be talking to you next? See, it's going to be how human adapt to uh, chat GPT and use it in their daily lives. Uh, you know, the kind of new jobs which will get created where AI is going to be a key component. I don't think so. Humans are going to get replaced. It is only going to be upskilling and enhancing our work function. For example, if you look at marketing today, a lot of content is created by, uh, you know, content generators. AI could be used for generating content and then be used uh, for it enhancing it further. So chat GPT could be used for creating new uh, videos, text. It could be used for writing speeches. Uh, it could be used for doing analysis when you put out a lot of data. So that's something which is a key uh, element. Uh, so a lot of times when you work on chat GPT, you have to feed in data. Otherwise, chat GPT does not give you the right answer. So what's going to change is now you can not only feed data, but you'll be able to feed videos as, uh, you know, images as well and later videos. So you can start using text, images and videos uh, to then analyze situations. So that's going to be a key differentiator. Uh, you know, a lot of this work was done manually. So, uh, so far the demand has been on data scientists to do this, but this is another tool which data scientists could use. Uh, so, you know, there will be excellent use case in data science. There would be excellent use case in marketing. This would also require great amount of use by financial analysts, right? Uh, but the, the key issue is that the GPT data is only updated till 2021. How, he, how GPT-4 gets tweeted post October 2, 2021 is going to be a key thing. And uh, would that be done by OpenAI themselves or they're going to create new interfaces is, is going to be a very important aspect. Another key concern I want to highlight here is that people who do cyber attacks or cyber frauds could use GPT-4 for automating a lot of cyber attacks using artificial intelligence. And uh, if you start feeding in data to chat GPT, it can create new mechanisms to okay. fraud people. It can create new mechanisms to actually do attacks on people's uh, digital infrastructure. So that is going to be a key concern and how open AI uh, looks at stopping this is going to be All a right. very important task. All right. Okay. Some very important points that have been raised by both you uh, and Ayush uh, through this uh, discussion. Something, of course, uh, to chew over as well. Ayush Alawadi and uh, Kanish Kaur, thank you so much for joining us this morning with your thoughts and perspectives on GPT-4.